Years after kicking me out over my brother's lies, my parents came back asking for money they expected me to forgive and forget. But this time, I had conditions and they weren't ready to face the truth. Years later, when my parents noticed my accomplishment and demanded money after they left me, I was kicked out as a teen for false rumors passed by my brother, 28-year-old female with twin brother. My twin brother and I grew up getting somewhat different treatment from our parents. As the so-called black sheep, my parents really appeared convinced, for some reason, that my brother was destined for brilliance while I was more interested in sports or hanging out with friends than in academics. Their continuous comparisons demoralized me and Earl undamaged my self-esteem. I was treated like an afterthought when a child, having to watch my brother throw lavish birthday celebrations with friends. While I was never even allowed to bring guests back to our house, he frequently slept over with them. To be really honest, I hated every minute of my youth. My grandma seemed to be the only family member who really gave me any thought. She always brought my preferred chocolates and sometimes dropped a few bucks to me so I could treat myself later when she visited us. This obvious preference for my twin brother evolved over the years into emotional abuse aimed at me. My parents would publicly criticize my hobbies and academics. No matter how hard I tried, I could seem to satisfy their ideal of the perfect child. Though I excelled in athletics, they forbade me from engaging in extracurricular activities since they wanted me to focus exclusively on schoolwork, exactly as my brother. It was annoying, and as a little child, I felt powerless. I grounded once again later in my sophomore year, this time the crime was having Snapchat on my phone. Apart from all teenagers my age, I had done absolutely nothing wrong, except I had downloaded this app to keep in touch with my buddies. But since my parents had prevented me from talking with my pals, this was a major offense and a betrayal of their trust, said my parents. They went batshit insane on me, dumped all of my stuff around the room, then removed the doors from their hinges and informed me I would have no privacy as long as I lived under their roof. Seeing my parents treat me this way, my identical brother made my life worse instead of helping me. Our parents' unfair behavior produced a poisonous surroundings that let him take advantage of the circumstances. He started lying about me, accusing me of things I never done so he might get away with everything. Should he steal something, he would easily point the finger on me and my parents, already inclined to view me negatively. His falsehoods were easily accepted. He would make fun of my appearance and belittle me in front of my schoolmates. Still, I had a large group of friends at school because I was friendly and open about forming relationships. But my twin, an introvert, felt uncomfortable and started to hate that I could interact with people. When no one came up for his birthday at our 14th birthday celebration, this jealously peaked. While in sharp contrast, my friends took me ice cream and I had an overall great day, I have no idea why his friends did that to him. This enraged my brother still more. My brother started spreading false accusations about me at school, presenting me as a spoilt child in order for retribution. Since our parents liked him more, he misled everyone by saying I was physically mistreating him at home. I had no idea he went to such a terrible degree. He would punch himself, carefully causing injuries like a black eye or bruised shoulder, in order to create evidence. He would boldly enter school the next day showing the self-inflicted injuries as evidence of my claimed brutality and create stories. He would lie, claiming that his injuries were from innocent sports like football with Pauls. Whenever our parents asked him about them, people started to trust his twisted view of events as the lies and his claimed black eyes gained momentum. Whispers soon spread and even my friends started to glance at me with mistrust. I first observed minute changes. People who used to converse with me in the hall suddenly started to fade, our group hangouts started to get fewer and more spaced apart invitations. People hesitated to be around the apparently spoilt girl accused of aggression, as if a switch had been turned off. I plucked the bravery one day to ask my former best buddy why our relationship had deteriorated. She talked about how my twin brother had been spreading gossip about me. She exposed the thorough lies he had told everyone, charging me of things I had never done. Hearing her say startled me. The sensation was one of mistrust mixed with incredulity as though the ground under me had collapsed. Someone I grew up with, my brother was fabricating stories about me, accusing me of doing things I would never have even considered. That was a devastating betrayal that left me with a knot in my gut and a weighty heart. The day I addressed my brother at school, he chose to ignore me. When I urged him to stop lying about me, he grinned at me and told me I deserved to rot alone. His falsehoods and actions were beginning to worry me, thus I found it difficult to express myself. Though I wanted to parents, I worried they would view my brother above me. Particularly considering that I had always been open to befriending others, the isolation pained. The lies driven by jealousy from my brother seemed to be destroying the relationships I had developed over years. Teachers too started to become caught in the rumors. It was a dreamlike sensation, as though I were living in a parallel universe in which the evil narrative woven by my twin eclipsed my actual self. The lies were influencing people's actual impressions of me, not only teenage chatter, they had evolved beyond simple gossip. The terrible news soon got to my principal and suddenly my worst nightmare materialized. Along with our parents, the main called my brother and me straight into his office to go over these supposedly rumors. Heart thumping, 
I sat there as the principal insisted on the reality. Though I expected my brother would at last come clean, he doubled down on the lies. He told the principal straightforwardly that, indeed, the allegations were accurate and characterized me as a bully who roamed about physically assaulting him while our parents were not around. I found it hard to believe. My brother kept telling this twisted tale about how I was furious at him for getting more attention from our parents, and shock flooded over me. Though everything of it was lies, he stayed to his tail like glue. Hearing my brother's tale, my mother started to cry. She grabbed onto my brother if he were some sort of hero, telling my brother that he was brave to speak up and that he would be ensuring nothing would ever happen to him. My dad sought to console him. That day, I tried to defend myself by begging the principal that everything was made up. Desperate to swim to the top, I felt as though I was drowning in a sea of accusations. Yet, my brother persisted in saying that I was this furious, aggressive person venting daily on him. As my mother clutched onto my brother, my tears kept flowing and I started to see accusing stares. It was like battling a wall of belief in my brother's invented narrative. Saying the school didn't accept bullying and that these were reasons to punish me, my principal chastised me severely. I begged him not to suspend me, but he shook his head, declaring he couldn't let it slip. Tears running down my face, I begged him to understand that I did nothing to help my brother. The main insisted that I would be suspended for 10 days so that others may learn from this never to bully anyone. It really hit me and I started crying even more, almost asking him to think twice. Furious and ashamed of the overall state of affairs, my parents hauled me from the principal's office. I refused to go. They were not understanding what I intended to provide as my argument. We left the institution, my heart weighed with shame and frustration. Things changed dramatically when we arrived home. Out of the blue, my dad started packing my stuff. Startled, perplexed, I had no idea what was occurring. When my mother questioned him what he was doing, he simply yelled that he cannot allow my brother to live in the same house anymore. I begged my brother to give them the truth, almost on my knees, but he stayed frigid, unmoved by my tears. After finishing packing, my dad dumped the luggage into our foyer. Still pleading my dad not to kick me out, I grabbed to his legs. Like a dream coming to pass, a bully like me didn't deserve to dwell in his house, he told me, and he would ask his mother, my grandma, to come fetch me up should she so want. The planet seemed to have collapsed under my feet. Surrounded by my stuff strewn in the foyer, booted out from my own house, I stood there shocked. My grandmother did show up finally. She helped me get into the passenger side by gathering all my stuff and arranging it in the car. Before approaching my parents' front door, she checked to be sure I had on my seatbelt. She rang the doorbell then started to shout at my dad for treating me this way when he opened it. She cautioned him sternly that she would not hesitate to engage the police or seat chef should he ever approach me or try to get in touch once more as what he had done to a child like me may eventually land him in prison. Trying to avoid responsibility, my mother said it was mine, but my grandmother wasn't feeling it at all. Emphasizing that I was only a young child who deserved not to be abused in such a merciless way, she stood her ground defending me. I had never felt such power in my life till then, from my grandmother. She trusted me rather than cowering to my parents as they thought. We finally left my house the only place I had ever grown up in behind us. It is impossible for me to adequately describe how intolerable the suffering I went through during that period. Though my grandma begged to me too, I recall simply crying on the bed and not eating anything. She was likewise startled when I told her what my brother had done. She told me she thought my side of the story and it made me glad at least one person had my back. The idea of going back to school was like stepping back into a lion's den once the 10 days of suspension ended. The faces of my students told volumes as I walked into the known hallways, judgment, murmurs, and sidelong glances. The weight of the unfounded charges hung in the air. My brother, meantime, deliberately disregarded me and behaved as though I didn't exist. A few people who saw him as the victim of my assaults and agreed his side of the story had grown friends with him. No matter how hard I attempted to present my side of the narrative to anyone, it was ignored. I was an outsider, labeled unfairly and carried around like a shadow wherever I went. The classroom, the cafeteria, the hallways, the eyes that locked with mine were contemptuous and mistrustful. I started to go alone. I would head down, show up for every class, have lunch by myself in the cafeteria, and head straight home. I had no friends, and it seemed as though everyone just didn't want me there. My parents never once phoned to see how I was doing throughout all this. My grandma would tell me again and over that life would finally be good and that this was not my fault. Having decent marks when I finished from high school, I was looking forward to college where maybe I would have a better life. I first felt what freedom felt like only when I left for college. Nobody was monitoring my shoulders, none was comparing my marks, and none was trying to challenge me for the first time. I ran into like-minded folks and developed friendships with them. Though my family and peers had caused emotional and physical scars over the years, I focused on putting all behind me and savoring this collegiate experience as much as I could. It was around this period that I developed my flair for content writing. Though I had always wanted to be a writer, I chose to give up on my ambition as I wasn't sure whether it would be long-term viable. But I decided to start freelancing and writing in order to pick some side money. Signing up on several freelancing platforms helped me land work from well-known companies. I began gradually compiling a portfolio of my works this way. I kept this side project throughout college and never approached my parents for one penny. Instead of landing a corporate job upon my college graduation, I discovered I could work full-time in content writing. 
The several clients and long-term professional ties I had with them helped them to rope me into several initiatives of theirs, thereby enabling me to be doing rather well. Having a respectable freelancing profession let me travel the globe as a digital nomad in addition to make me financially independent. Though it was certainly not easy, traveling helped me heal from past. I grabbed as much as I could and gambled on myself. I have seen so much of the globe throughout the years, yet I still have so much to see. My grandma was the only member of my family I thought about all through all this. I really loved her. When I moved out, mother was quite depressed, yet she knew I had to be independent on my own. Though I have a busy schedule, I would make it a point to be with her whenever I could. On the weekends, I would go see her usually sitting on the porch or enjoying meals together, lost in talks ranging from childhood stories to more current events. On weekends, I would spend whole days assisting mom with housework or taking her for a leisurely stroll to the neighborhood park. Lately, I finished one of the most significant assignments of my career. Though I cannot name the brand, I was quite fortunate to create blogs and product descriptions for them. Following the assignment, I asked the team I collaborated with to offer me favorable fee fares, to so offer me favorable feedback on my website, which they were more than glad to do. Knowing working with this brand was a big event, so I grabbed screenshots of some of their evaluations to publish on Instagram. Many additional content creators, as predicted, contacted me to celebrate my professional achievement and even shared my tale to assist in dissemination. This is how I began receiving messages from random people needing assistance with their websites. Some of my family also spotted this and contacted out to congrats me. Eventually, the principal of my college got in touch. Seeing that I was doing so well, he had gotten in touch with me and asked me to visit college for a lecture to discuss career paths as a content writer to students. Though I struggle with public speaking, I was really anxious, so I decided to take a chance and consented. My life seemed to have gone full circle when I stood before expectant faces imparting my knowledge and views. In my lecture, I discussed the difficulties I encountered and how I persevered in spite of many demanding days. Empowering others and helping the writer's community flourish was, quite honestly, a really rewarding experience. As individuals related to several of my clips, they began to go popular on Facebook groups. Being at last appreciated for my effort felt fantastic. I received an invitation to speak on a local news station last week. The presentation highlighted the advantages of content writing, and they asked me to share with their viewers my path and observations. Though a little anxious, the chance excited me. I discussed my experiences, the value of client feedback, and how a little thank you note might create amazing possibilities during the show. The chance to inspire more people in the profession and appeal to a larger audience humbles and excites me. I also posted some of these snippets on Instagram when it eventually aired as I felt honored to be asked to a TV show. My cousins and family first began learning about my work performance this way. You see, my parents had no knowledge that I was working with well-known businesses and receiving invites to TV shows as they never discussed me with anybody. This is how rapidly information got out inside my family. I suppose this TV interview must have at last made sense to my parents. A few days later, I was working on another job and found my phone quiet. When I checked my phone after finishing my work, I found six missed calls from my mother. Surprised her name on my phone truly startled me since it had been a long, long time since she had phoned me. After all those years of quiet, I couldn't understand why she was phoning. I hesitated then called her back, and she picked up right away. When I asked her if everything was good, my mother started praising me. Usually seated right there with mom, my dad also joined in the discourse. He began asking about my life and well-being, and I responded without much thinking. It wasn't odd until they started asking how much I was making these days. My dad answered that we were family, thus I shouldn't be shy sharing with them my salary since it is none of their concern. I assured him I was doing financially really well. Hearing this, my mother started to explain how difficult their life was these days. My brows wrinkled with mistrust. Here is essentially our conversation's general flow. Mom, we have been wishing to remodel the house for some time. We are retired now. Though we have no savings left, its shape is not ideal. Me okay, Mom, we have hope since your success. Having seen your TV interview today, we reasoned perhaps you could assist us by covering the renovation's costs. Dad, we are family first of all. You should not hesitate to forward some of your income to us. We truly need your assistance. Me, are you teasing me? Having not even spoken with you for years, why are you requesting money? While I appreciate the congrats, I am not going to assist you in any capacity. I wonder what motivated you to get in touch to me. Hearing this, my mother began to remark how I should have been appreciative and that I should have helped them as family. My dad also said that this was the least I could do since my parents deserved to be looked for. I wanted to give them some of my thinking since I was so offended at this. I thought suddenly of something. Rather than merely fighting with them, I chose to teach them a lesson for lifetime since mistreating me all those years ago caused them to leech off me. I informed my parents I would be ready to assist them should they agree to my request solely. My dad asked me, perplexingly, what they were. I immediately set out my demand. If they sought my assistance, they had to openly acknowledge in front of our family and friends that my brother was the brain behind the nasty allegations damaging my name, believing their lies and manipulation would help them to humiliate my brother the same way they had humiliated me before everyone. I wanted them to own their deeds and admit the suffering they had caused. 
Hearing my impossible condition, my dad started to doubt the need of such an admittance. I stood my ground even though my mother informed me that this was all pretty pointless and that we could have a private conversation apart from others. This condition was non-negotiable, that was what any help they sought for in the future required. My dad spoke up as the tension grew, stressing his part as my father and underlining that it was my obligation to my needy family, emphasizing the years they had spent raising me. My mom, in a last-ditch effort, urged me to act morally and assist them. Their abrupt appeal struck me as ironic. I reminded them of the the past, of the fact they had kicked me out, and of the fact my grandmother had reared me, not they. They were increasingly restless, but I firmly reminded them that if they wanted to approach me and ask for my financial help going forward, then the truth had to be admitted publicly and my brother had to pay repercussions for his deeds. My folks have been calling me non-stop since our chat, but I am avoiding their calls. Even phoning them back that day makes me regretful. If I did nothing at all to assist my parents, would I really be in the wrong? Update one since I last told my tale a week ago. Things have been a whirl, and the help and encouragement I have been getting from everyone has been deluging. Knowing that I'm not alone at this period makes one hopeful. After all they have gone through, I am happy everyone feels I should not interact with my parents or even think about helping them out. I knew it was quite almost impossible for them to do, hence I even set them such a condition. Though they might have discovered by now that it was all his lies, I know they will never put my brother through what they put me through. They love him too much. After my parents once more tried to get in touch with me today, my brother sent me a nasty text message. I ignored their calls. He composed this. Hey sis, I can tell you every day without you and my life has been fantastic. It's been a long time since I seen you. Mom and dad contacted you from what I heard and you gave them an insane directive. You know, they never are going to follow through on it. They will never do anything to damage me, and they most obviously never loved you. Although I did lie about you 15 years ago, it has been a long time since then, hence cease being so self-serving and attempt to let go from the past. You are childless and single anyway, hence why would you not want to assist them with house repairs and renovations? Act moral and be a better daughter. Seeing the letter felt as though it were a stab to the chest. His lack of empathy was evident in the boldness to discount the hardships I had gone through and the conditions I had established. Emphasizing my single and childless status, the effort to guilt trip me added still another degree of insensitivity. Not only was his implication that I should put their needs ahead of my own well-being objectionable, but it also underlined how little he considered me. Frustrated and driven by a deep need for justice, I determined it was time to intervene and expose the truth buried for too long. Sitting down to send an email to my parents and close relatives, I shared the terrible facts of my life and the unfair treatment I had suffered in my family house. In the email, I detailed how my parents treated me differently from my twin brother and the rigor of the matressive surroundings I had lived under. The email also explored the damaging and wholly false rumor my brother had disseminated about me in school, which had resulted in serious repercussions and damaged my name. I wrote on how my parents had kicked me out to the curb and how, had it not been for my grandma, by now I may have been dead in the streets. I encouraged everyone to read a note my brother had emailed toward the end. I included a screen grab showing him owning to lying about me. It was an unambiguous confession meant to reveal the lies that had lasted far too long. Just an hour ago, I wrote the email. Once my parents and brother see it all hell will explode. I will let you know next wise on how my family responds to my email. Update 2. My last update was one month ago, and as you might imagine, a lot of things have transpired this month. My family burst upon getting the email. Relatives who were earlier ignorant of the degree of the favoritism and emotional abuse have criticized my parents. Many of the family members contacted me apologizing for not being there for me and stating they had no idea about all this. I decided to contact a lawyer after my brother and dad sent me a torrent of text messages beginning to get increasingly violent and nasty. She sent a notice of cease and desist. It essentially advised them not to get in touch with me anymore and that should they do, they would suffer severe severe legal repercussions. Given they ceased getting in touch, I suppose this must have terrified them straight. My grandmother supports me 100% since she believes I have done the right thing by informing everyone what occurred. She is the only person that counts to me, hence I'm happy she has my back. Update 3. Two months apart have gone between my last update. For now, I am glad to say that all in my life is running smoothly. Professionally, my article writing company has been doing great. The offers to present at podcasts and seminars keep coming in, therefore confirming my reputation as a valued professional in my field of work. I am now as near to my grandmother as ever. Recently, I took a one-week vacation from work so I could spend some time with her. These days, she enjoys gardening and taught me a lot about different herbs and flowers in her yard. My best and most treasured memories are the times I spend with her, meal sharing, deep talks, or just hanging around. I'm glad my family is keeping away from me since they haven't contacted me since the letter my attorney sent them. Since I personally started attending therapy, hopefully I can work on mending myself. Right now I believe this will be the last update. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.